All right, so today we begin with the legacy of Louis Armstrong, who was one of the most recognizable jazz entertainers in the world. What a wonderful world. <laughs> and through the Louis Armstrong House Museum, his legacy lives on. Preserving and rehabilitating the home through archival materials, community programming, tours, jazz education, and more. And since it has been declared to be a national and historic landmark. Joining us to share more is Executive Director of the Louis Armstrong House Museum, Regina Babe. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for the work that you are doing preserving our cultural history. Mm -hmm. This is amazing, okay? I gotta tell you, this is the first time I'm learning about mm -hmm. the Louis Armstrong House Museum. Mm -hmm. And um, the fact that it's here, um, accessible to us, even though we gotta cross a bridge, it's still our neighbors. Yes. And, um, and the work that's put into preserving it. So let's talk a little bit about your role first mm -hmm. as an executive director and how long you've been serving in this uh, capacity. Yes, so I love that you said our cultural history because it is ours and that's part of what we do at the museum. What I do as the executive director is to make sure that it remains ours and accessible to us. Jazz is a, is a music of the people um, and Louis Armstrong was a man of the people. He was born in New Orleans but lived for 30 years in Corona, Queens. So my role, our museum's role, is to share that story of his and Lucille, we gotta mention Lucille Armstrong, his wife, and, wh and what they did in Corona, but also what they did around the world. He traveled to 65 different countries. He was America's first black popular music icon. So what we do is share that story and make sure everyone knows it's theirs. And the beauty of, of Louis Armstrong is that for me, um, just as a human being mm -hmm. and taking away a lesson, he remained authentic yes, to he himself. Did. And I love that. Yes, he did. His voice, and, and of course he was a man of the people, as you said, mm -hmm. he was all about community. Yes, he was. Right, no, regardless of where he traveled to and who he was performing with. He could make friends anywhere. And that's so like, it, it's, it's inspiring. And uh, the fact that once again, his stories, his history is accessible mm -hmm. on, a, on such an intimate level. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important for our community to understand that this is here in our backyard. Yes. Even and though you have to cross a bridge. <laughs> yes, you do, but come on over, come on over. We're not too far away. So I wanna give everybody a little history, uh, a little background on the history. Uh, so you, we do know that Louis Armstrong passed away in 1971 and his wife Lucille remained in the house that is now serving as this museum. And it was her will that yes. made sure that it happened. Mm -hmm. And um, I understand that it took her a very long time mm -hmm. to make it happen. And then she basically partnered up or she designated the City University of Queens College to shepherd the rest of the process. And um, after decades, it finally became this historic monument in 2003. Mm -hmm. Lucille was a bad woman. <laughs> she knew what she wanted and uh, she was a cotton club dancer and she bought the home with her own money in the 1940s for a black woman to be able to buy her own, a black artist to be able to buy her own, her own home in the 1940s. There were many laws and social norms that went against that. She made it happen and then told her husband, Louis Armstrong, the next time you come off the road, come here. This is where we live now. That's who, Louis, that's who Lucille was. Nice. Um, and she made sure that when she passed, she worked with the Louis Armstrong Educational Foundation and Queens College and the city of New York and said, I want this home to become a museum. It took a while, but it happened. We opened in 2003 to the public for historic house tours. Anyone can come and experience the home. No one has lived in the home since they did. So all the furnishings, the wallpaper, the feeling, it feels like they just stepped out for a moment. And so that's what people can come and experience. But now they can also come and experience the new Armstrong Center that opened last year right across the street. Amazing. You know what I love about the way you open this up? It's like you put the woman as the nucleus because in essence, that's what she created. She yes. created the foundation of yes. like, this is home. This is home. 
when you come off of the road, come here. Right. We can be protected here. You can talk here. You can perform out to the world and make friends with the world, but you need a safe, secure place that is your home. She had that vision and she shared that vision. And we continue to share that vision with our guests. Come on over, come home. It's beautiful that you're able to pass that information along because it also, um, it also demonstrates her humility and mm -hmm. not needing it to be about her mm -hmm. and making it about him mm -hmm. because he, he's the icon, right? Yes. And this is his story and her story. Yes. Right? And so this is how it's being passed on to the next generation. Obviously, his songs live on forever, especially during the holidays. What a wonderful world is. Beautiful. You know, the holiday classic. I think he outdoes Mariah. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. uh -oh. <laughs> Did uh -oh. I do that? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> I know, I know. That's all you meant. I know. I know. That's debatable. And I think it has to do with age bracket, right? Whether you're Gen X, Gen Z, or maybe even oh, Gen Z. Oh, together. The baby boomers. Together. Yeah, yeah, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, most recently, uh, I understand that it was a huge grant that was offered. Yes. Right? So talk to us about what this grant is going to present yes. for, for this. Uh, it's a national monument, right? Yes. And we were so lucky to win the National Medal for Museums um, presented by the uh, uh, federal agency. Um, and they presented that for us for the work we do in community. And we were able to uh, win a huge grant from the National Park Service, a $750,000 grant to preserve the historic home, the roof, the walls, all of that so that when the thousands of visitors who come each year come through our space, they're protected, it's safe, and, um, and they can experience the spirit of Louis Armstrong. So, okay, so that is the museum aspect mm -hmm. of this uh, establishment, right? Mm -hmm. Because you just mentioned that there's now an expansion yes. across the street that offers, I guess, all the programming. And so I, I just want to visualize, mm -hmm. and trust me, I will be visiting with mm -hmm. my daughter mm -hmm. um, because she's a vocal music major um, in, in high school. And mm -hmm. so uh, this, again, the, the fact that it's accessible, and I, I don't know how many people even know that it's mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. except if you're in the borough. So yes. I hope everyone is listening and, and, under, and understands how important it is for us to really make it our business to become knowledgeable of our history, mm -hmm. our cultural history, our musical history, and, um, and our New York history. Yes, it's ours. It's, it's a, yeah, yes. right? And so when a person arrives, they can go to the museum for uh, a tour, mm -hmm. right? And so that is just for that. Mm -hmm. And then across the street, they actually have the opportunity to sign up for programming. Mm -hmm. Okay, so walk us through the, the differences. Yes. So for many years, across the street, there was an empty parking lot. And we actually found out there was this the, another home there years ago, the Simpkins family. Um, but it eventually was turned into the new Armstrong Center. And uh, this is a space with a 75-seat jazz club. Oh, wow. So we have artists... Uh, like Jason Moran, like um, so, so many beautiful artists have sung on, on that and played on that stage. And it's an intimate space. So you have this amazing musician that you're very close to. And it was built to have excellent sound. So come check out a concert in this 75 seat jazz club. But it also has the 60,000 piece archive, the largest of any jazz musician wow. that's housed in this space. It's letters, it's photographs, it's trumpets, all of these artifacts that represent Armstrong's life and his li the life of the people around him in Corona, his band. We have those physical archives, they're also digitized. People can go on our website and look at it 24 hours a day, look at anything that they want. Um, and, and there was an amazing exhibit that was curated about those archives. That's amazing. And, and then you've got this, um, this creative way of also sharing the history mm -hmm. and or the connection in artistry, because I know you just recently had this tap dancer. Yes, who, we did. Yes, yeah, so, because Lisa. I I learned yes. that he was a tap dancer. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he was a tap dancer. Mm -hmm. He danced. It, so jazz, Jazz is definitely music, but we, we have this phrase that the art is jazz. Right. Jazz is a, is a culture, just like hip hop is a culture. But doesn't tap fall in the, in the category of percussion? Well, 
Yeah, yes, yes, it does. Right, it right? is percussion. It's right. part of music. That's right. actually an amazing tap dancer who came, um, and she talks about being an instrument in the band as a tap dancer. Lisa Latouche, who's an Armstrong Now artist, uh, did a residency, and she t uh, talks about uh, how she fits in with musicians in the band. But the art, culture, jazz is a culture. It's about the music, but it's about dance. It's about visual art. It's about the way you walk through the world. There's a person who can be jazz. Uh, but not play a note. That's a, a culture that we are cultivating at our museum. That's amazing. So if somebody wanted to participate as an artist, mm -hmm. um, how, how would they go about doing that? Well, if they're a young artist, uh -huh. age 8 to 12, they can actually take trumpet lessons with us. So we have very low-cost trumpet lessons for students that they can participate. Um, if they're an older, more professional artist, they can apply to be an Armstrong Now artist, where you get a $10,000 residency in our space um, and then perform in our space and perform around New York and maybe beyond. So there are definitely ways for artists to engage with us, but also just community. If you want to take a yoga class, we have yoga in the summer. Um, come drop by, hang out. We like community c to come over. I love that you also made sure that it remains related to him. Mm -hmm. Trumpet lessons. Trumpet lessons. Oh my gosh, we can go on and on. We're out of time, Regina, mm -hmm. but I am so grateful to you for making your way to the Bronx to share this information with our residents. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for your energy of love for jazz. Um, and I hope all of your guests come on over. All right. I love it. Regina Bain, everyone, executive director of the Louis Armstrong House Museum. Once again, for more information on tours, concerts, and educational events, you can visit louisarmstronghouse.org. All right, stay tuned. There's more open when we return.